Welcome to the Philosopher's Games and a new episode of Once Upon a Time in Games. Our topic today is obviously the Nintendo Switch. Looking at the presentation from the 13th of January 2017, I thought about calling this episode The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. It has some impressive elements, some less impressive elements and some flat out bad ones. I start with the potential ugly. Nintendo announced that their online service will have a subscription fee around fall this year, until then it's free. Basically they do the same thing as Sony and Microsoft, which is understandable, but to be honest Nintendo's track record for online services is not that great. Still, we have not enough information yet. What we know so far, there will be communication features that are probably comparable to the other services. It also includes a NES or SNES game you can play for a specific month with the subscription. So if I understood that correctly, that means just one game per month and you can't keep it. And I assume some special game deals will also be part of the subscription. Sounds not like the greatest deal I have ever heard of, but if they should manage to develop and establish a service that is comparable to the others and have a reasonable low price, let's say $20 a year, this couldn't be as bad as people make it to be. Still not great, but also not as bad. But there are some concerns. First of all, as a new console, the Switch has naturally a small games library, so it could happen that there's not much going on in terms of good deals at the beginning. Then, Nintendo's online service in the past was not good, to say it politely. Nintendo seems to have no clue when it comes to online services. There are not enough games with online multiplayer, so it just makes the few of them more expensive and less interesting. It seems like they want to create a smartphone app that delivers some of the communication features, which is a bit strange to be honest. Nintendo's pricing policy has not resonated well with the word cheap in the past, so who knows what they are charging for this, but nobody would be surprised if it would be overpriced. You have access to one NES or SNES game every month when you pay. I assume the game changes every month. If these are the only games you get with your subscription, it fails in comparison to the other console services. Paying X amount of money for a 30 year old game you only get to rent for months is not that attractive when you get several modern games on the other consoles with your subscription that you can also play as long as you are subscribed and in case of the Xbox you can even keep the Xbox 360 games. With this in mind, announcing a paid online service is not the smartest move if you don't have a good concept. But we don't know about the price yet and I think this factor is very important. Maybe for a very small amount of money, like 10 or 20 dollars a year, it could be an acceptable deal. Nintendo said they will announce more information in the future and also the service is free until fall. The bet. Pricing. I would say $299 without a game is okayish, but Nintendo typical peripherals and other accessories seem to be quite expensive. A complete second controller consisting of two Joy-Cons and this middle part with charging capabilities seem to be $110. 80 for the two Joy-Cons and the charger part is $30. That is quite expensive. Also in some regions the prices are a lot higher, for example in Canada as always. The good. The new Zelda. Let's make it short. As you probably are aware, I have a high opinion on the game so far. The new trailer managed to increase that even further. We have to wait until it's out and I don't like hyping things up, but the game looks very promising and has the potential to be one of the best Zelda games of the series. Atmosphere, art, sound and gameplay looked phenomenal. With the trailer we got some story elements that looked great too. Also the treehouse part with more gameplay showed some places and NPCs and the world felt alive just from observing it and has this charm to it. 
The potential is definitely there and it was long enough in development for a great amount of polish. The hardware of the Switch could be probably a bit limiting when it comes to high graphical fidelity, but that is not what this game is about. Also being able to play it on a flight or in the train has some appeal, I have to admit. This is truly a killer app and having it as a launch title will help, even if the Switch is nothing more than a Zelda machine on release. In addition, we got some nice announcements for some coming games. Fans of Japanese RPGs and the like will probably like this. A new Fire Emblem Warriors, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Dragon Crest Heroes 1 and 2, Dragon Crest X, The Five Awakening Races Online, Dragon Crest 11, Disgaea 5, Project Octopath, Traveler, a new Shin Megami Tensei and I'm Setsuna. But also a new 3D Mario open world game in the spirit of Sunshine, which looks very interesting. And they showed a fighting game called ARMS, which looks like a lot of fun. It was promoted using the motion controls, but they are optional as far as I know. Of course, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is coming in April, about 6 weeks after launch. And some more games. Some people complain about the launch and launch window titles, but from my perspective it is not as bad as people make it to be in comparison to other console launches that were successful. The problem is that some standard titles are missing and you can play Zelda on the Wii U. Here's a list with the direct launch titles and the titles we get after some weeks. If we look at the PlayStation 4 launch we have this list. And the Xbox One list is quite similar. You see a lot of titles were also released for the previous generation or PC and some titles are also not that great. You had Neck and Killzone. If you only look at big exclusives for the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One maybe had a slightly stronger launch lineup with a Forza, Killer Instinct, maybe Rise, Dead Rising and Crimson Dragon. Or let's say it was more diverse. Also keep in mind it took those consoles quite some time to get good exclusives. Games like Bloodborne came out over a year after the PlayStation 4's release. From my perspective Zelda alone seems stronger, as long as you don't own a Wii U that is. Which is quite likely to be honest, but of course the Switch is not competing with the weak launch lineup of their competitors from 2013, but with their competitors game libraries and prices right now. The disadvantage of the Switch from my perspective, no Mass Effect Andromeda, no For Honor, no Resident Evil 7 and so on, at least as far as we know. And we have to face the reality that the established consoles have those titles, will get those titles and more titles are coming out and some of them will most likely not be ported to the Switch, even if I hope otherwise. They are getting some kind of FIFA, which is a start, but will it be enough? Another problem could be that the PlayStation 4 has a lot of steam right now and can easily overshadow its competitors, so it can be tough for Nintendo. What makes me a bit more optimistic is that Nintendo is not directly competing with them and have this unique use the console as a handheld feature, which is something their competitors can provide. And it could be huge in countries like Japan if the games library is powerful enough. Zelda at least is a good start here. My final thoughts lead to the question who should actually buy it? I think the portable feature is an element that makes this console quite unique and is a selling point. The Switch is probably interesting for people who already have one of the other consoles or a PC and looking for a secondary device, maybe a handheld and some games you can play on the other systems. I also think that especially the market in Japan is important for Nintendo and there the handheld aspect could actually be huge. The battery time seems to be in the same area as the Nintendo 3DS depending on the game and can be extended with a power bank you use for smartphones which is acceptable. 
Also, within six months, we will have some great titles coming to the Nintendo Switch. And we know, of course, that Nintendo is able to deliver other strong games. There are rumors about a new time exclusive beyond good and evil. I could imagine they will port Mario Maker or make a new one too. It would be stupid not to do that at some point and the Switch has a touchscreen. Also, there is a little hope that we maybe hear about a new Metroid within the next 12 months, I assume at E3. And if we just look at the hypothetic potential of Nintendo IPs, well, potential is there. So overall I don't think the Switch is doomed from the beginning, but some announcements ruined it a bit. But keep in mind that a lot of information is still missing, like the price of the online service, which will make a huge difference. If all the trouble right now is followed by some good decisions, it could become great. The Nintendo Switch launches at the 3rd of March 2017. I hope you enjoyed this video. The presentation left me behind a bit confused and it took me a while to bring all of this into some kind of order. That is also why it took me longer than I expected to make this video. If you enjoyed it and are interested in more content like this, consider following me on Twitter for updates or do the YouTube things. Thank you for watching and goodbye.